You'll notice that this slide is blank. It's not an accident. It's because I want to draw a little picture for you to describe exponential growth before we get into the actual lesson. And there's this classic uh, problem solving puzzle called the telephone question. I'm not really sure if that's the official name, but you'll know what it is when I'm talking, when I start describing it. It happens in real life. It might have already happened to you. Um, so for example, let's say that you are this dot and you've got this secret that you tell and you say, you know what, I'm only going to tell my two best friends. So the secret, now two people know it. But unfortunately, your best friends are not as trustworthy as you thought. And they can't hold in the secret, and so they each tell two of their best friends, two new friends, and then those friends tell two new people. And before you know it, everybody knows the secret. Um, and obviously, if I had more space over here, I would continue it, but you see where I'm going with this. It's exponentially growing. It goes one person knew it, then two people knew it, then four people knew it, then eight people knew it, 16 people would know it, then 32 people would know it, and then the whole school would know your secret, and then you'd be very embarrassed. Um, or maybe it's a good secret. But anyway, that's an example of exponential growth. Exponential growth happens when a quantity increases by the same factor over equal intervals. I've also used the word ratio in previous examples. And this formula right here, this exponential growth formula, might look a little intimidating, but I want you to re realize that it's really just another form of y equals a b to the x, only instead of b, we're putting 1 plus r. And I'll explain what that means as we go through our variables. Y in our formula stands for the final amount. A stands for the initial amount, also known as the starting amount. R stands for the rate of growth, the one rule is that this must be in decimal form. And T stands for time, and it's typically in years. So let's check out an example. The function y equals blah, blah, blah represents the attendance at a music festival T years after 2010. By what percent does the festival increase each year? So they're asking me something about a rate of increase. So I'm going to use the section that has the 1 plus r. So if 1 plus r represents the rate of increase, that's in the 1.1 spot. So r is 0.1. Now 0.1 as a percent is 10%. So it's increasing 10% every year. Now they want to know how many people attended the festival in 2014. Well, if it started in 2010, how many years have passed to get to 2014? So that's four years. So you take your formula, but instead of t, you put 4. And grab your calculator. Let's power them up. 1.1 to the fourth times 150,000 is 219,615 people. But be careful, they want it to the nearest 10,000. So that's this place value right here. So the answer is 220,000 people. All right, I'd like you to try letter B on your own. All right, when you're ready, let's move on. So there's another blank slide, and you guessed it. It's because I want to explain what we're about to do. Now, in the past, you've encountered something called simple interest. And here's how simple interest works. You start with $100, and let's say, for make, make it simple, no pun intended, haha, -ha, um, is that you get 10% interest. So 10% of 100 is $10. So you get, after a year, you get $10, so that means you have 110 
then you get another ten dollars and so now you have a hundred and twenty and then you get another ten dollars and you have a hundred and thirty and this would continue on and on and on every year adding ten dollars but that's not how real life works real life deals with this thing called compound interest and here's compound interest so I'll start you off with the same $100 and the same 10% to make life simple, but it's not, it's compound. So first year, you'd get the same, you'd get $10 and you'd get $110, so big deal. Then the next year, the bank recognizes that you have $110. The bank doesn't calculate your interest based on the original amount. It bases it on what you currently have in the bank. So your $10 or your I'm sorry, your 10% is actually $11 because you're getting 10% of 110. And so now you have $121. So big whoop, one more dollar, but now the next year you get another 10% and that's $12.10. So that would give you $133.10 and then you get another 10% and that would be uh, $13.31, so then you would add that, and you'd get $146.41, and let's do one more time, 10% again, gives you $14.64, that is $160, oh, whoops, I should have added from the back, That gives me $161.05. So you can see um, it is already over $10 larger. And that's an example of what real banks do. They don't use simple interest. They use compound interest. And let's check out the formula. Whoa, super crazy. But again, it's just another form of y equals a b to the x. Only in this case, the b, the base, is represented by this compounding situation that's happening. And you have this n value, which I'll explain in a moment. So let's look at the parts. y still represents our final amount. And in this case, piece is a banking word. It stands for the principal, and that is another way of saying the starting amount, the initial, the initial. But in banking language, they use the word principal. R still stands for the growth rate. And don't forget, it has to be a decimal. T still stands for time, and it still has to be in years. And N stands for the number of times the interest is compounded yearly. And I'll show you two different examples of how that might impact the formula. So letter A, example two. You deposit $100 in a savings account that gets 5% annual interest compounded yearly. And all we have to do is write a function. We don't have to evaluate anything because we actually don't know how many years the money's been in this account. So we can't calculate how much money is in there. The only thing we can do is plug the values in and write a function. So y equals, and now I just plug in my values. The principal is 100, 1 plus... The rate is 0 0.05, and the number of times it's compounded yearly, well, if it says it's compounded yearly, then that means it's compounded once every year. And so 1 goes in for n, and now all we can do is just simplify. So we get y equals 100 plus, or I'm sorry, 100 times, 1 plus 0 0.05 to the t, and I can just do a little more simplification, y equals 100 times 1.05 to the t. 
So if the follow-up question asked you or told you how many years the bank account was active, you could plug that in for T and find the amount of money in the account. Letter B, you deposit $500 in a savings account that earns 4% annual interest compounded monthly. So we'll look at what that means. Write and graph a function that represents the balance after T years. All right, so first thing I have to do is write the function. Then I'll plug in some values. Remember, if you're not sure what a graph looks like, you make a table. So we'll make a table, but in order to do that, I need a function. So y equals, well, it starts off with $500 and 1 plus. The rate is 0 0.04, and it's compounded monthly. So how many times each year is it compounded? Well, that would mean every month, so that's 12 times. So 0.4 divided by 12, so that would be 12t. All right, y equals 500 plus, uh, times 1 plus. I've got to get my calculator out, 0 0.04 divided by 12 is 0 0.0. I'll just round that, 0 0.003, 12t. So let me just do one more simplification. 500 times 1.003 to the 12t. All right, so now I'm just going to plug in a couple values for t and see what I get for y. Um, I'll do 0, 1, 2, and 3. And 4, hey, why not, because I have a little room. So pause the video, be careful, Follow your order of operations and plug in the values. And when you think you have the values, play the video and see if you match. All right, so I've rounded to the nearest penny because I'm talking about a bank account. So obviously the labels make sense to be money. And if you did not get these values and you don't know how to get these values, write that down and ask me, in class. But let's assume that you got the values. Now we have to figure out what a scale, good scale is, and plot our points. So I think I'm going to, well obviously I'm going to stay in this first quadrant. Or I guess that should actually be a T. And this will be the number of years and this will be, I'll start this at, I'll make a break and do 500. And I can do that because it's an increasing graph. And I'll go by uh, tens. So here we go. Let's plot our points. 0, 500 plots here. 1, 5, 18, 30. Well, that would be like around here. And we obviously have to just estimate. Then I've got 537, which would be around here. Then 556, which would be here. And 577, which is here. So it looks a little linear, but it's not. Um, it actually will curve. And we know that because it's exponential, don't make a straight line because you know it's not linear. Um, so let's write the function y equals 500 times 1.003 to the 12t. So in example five, we have to do two things. One is we have to write a function and then you have to graph the function. So this table, if you remember it, it should look familiar. This is from my um, example where I kind of described compound interest. So we have a formula y equals $100 because that's our starting value. And from my example, we use the rate as 10%. And we compounded it yearly, so that would be over 1. 
and it would be 1 times t. So I'll just simplify it just a little more. y equals 100 times 1.10 to the t. Now, if you didn't know this, meaning like it was an example you hadn't seen five minutes ago, then you would have to actually calculate the percent change, um, which is a skill from seventh grade finding the percent difference between two values. Um, but I used that example intentionally so we could just get to the graphing portion. So anytime you're not sure what the values are, make a table and look they actually already made the table for you. So pause the video and graph this, please. All right, even though it might look like they're making a line, don't make them a line. Make it a curve because we know that this is exponential. And don't forget to write the equation on the graph. And if you have any questions, write them down.